Transistor theory. What we've seen so far is a diode. A diode is a two-terminal device, a PN junction. A transistor is a three-terminal device. It could be either PNP or NPN. The objective here is to understand how a transistor works and determine a circuit model for the three states of a transistor. Now, transistors are very similar to diode. They're also made up of silicon, made up of N and P type material. They differ, however, in that there are three terminal devices. As such, there are two types of transistors, NPN and PNP. Secondly, transistors can operate in three states, on, off, and saturated. Transistors can operate as a switch, they can operate on and off, and they can also be used as an amplifier. Now, an analogy for transistors, it would be a water tank. Suppose I've got a large column of water trying to flow towards ground, and I've got a valve able to regulate the water flow. I can turn the valve off, meaning the water flow is zero. I can turn the valve fully on, allowing the maximum flow to go through the valve. And there's an intermediate state. In the intermediate state, I can regulate the flow by the valve. If I adjust the valve, open and close it, the water flow will change accordingly. That gives you the three states for a valve, which also correspond to three states for a transistor. Active or proportional. The thing to remember, a valve by itself will not produce water flow. You need a source of water to push the water through the valve in order for it to work. Same works for transistor. There has to be a power supply trying to push current through the transistor. The transistor simply acts as a valve, regulating the flow. Now, the way a transistor operates, a transistor can be either PNP or NPN. Uh, let's consider an NPN transistor. I've got three regions, two N-type materials sandwiching a P-type region in the middle. If you notice, between base and emitter, is a PN junction. That's a diode. Likewise, if I try to apply voltage across the diode, the diode will turn on at 0.7 volts for silicon, allowing current to flow. Since the base is P type material, holes will be flowing from P to N, from the base to the emitter. If I dope the emitter, say 100 times more heavily than the base is doped, for every hole that flows, there will be 100 electrons flowing across that PN junction. Next, I make the base very, very thin. Likewise, any electron that flows from the emitter to the base passes straight through and winds up at the collector. The collector is also n-type material, so the electrons are majority carriers, and the electrons flow freely through the collector. The net result, however, is that for every unit of current base to emitter, I get 100 units of current emitter to collector. That gives the model for a transistor. The symbol for a PNP transistor, actually NPN, is as follows. If you recall, base to emitter, base was P, emitter was N, collector was N. Base to emitter is a PN junction, that's a diode. That's symbolized with an arrow. The arrow reminds you there's a diode base to emitter, that's the direction current wants to flow. Similarly, the model for a transistor is a diode. Collector to emitter is a current amplifier. If you recall, based upon the doping, if I have 100 times as much doping at the emitter than the base, for every hole that flows, I'll get 100 electrons flowing emitter to collector. Electrons are negative charged, however, producing current flow in the downward region. So likewise, the current that I get is going to be beta times I sub B, or in the example I gave, 100 times the base current. That gives you current amplification. Recall, however, the transistor doesn't actually produce current flow. It's a valve. It regulates current flow. I need something else up here trying to push the current flow through the transistor. The transistor will then act as a valve regulating that current flow.
So again, there can be three states, just like a valve. I can turn the valve fully off, stop the current flow, turn the valve fully open, and I can regulate, restrict the flow. Likewise, I'm going to have three different models for transistor. Uh, the first is the off state. The current flow based to emitter controls the collector to emitter current. If this is equal to zero, the collector current will be zero. A model for zero current flow is just an open circuit. Likewise, if you don't have enough voltage to turn on the base to emitter diode, the transistor is open. It's turned off. Second model is the active region. Again, I've got, suppose I have current flow base to emitter. That's going to try to produce current flow, ICE, equal to beta times IBE. To symbolize that, I again replace the base emitter with a diode. This arrow, again, is a reminder that there's a diode base to emitter. That's the direction of current flow. Collector to emitter, I've got a current amplifier, a current control current source. The current is beta times IB. This, of course, assumes that my power supply is capable of producing that much current. If I demand too much current, if I demand current more than the max possible, it saturates at the maximum possible. It's sort of like a valve. If you take a valve and open it fully, I'll get the maximum flow. Open the valve even more, I'm not going to get any more water. I'll only get as much water as the power supply or the hose can produce. Similarly with a transistor. If I have a power supply trying to push current through the transistor, I'll never get more current than the power supply can produce. Essentially what the transistor is doing is it's adjusting the voltage across it. Collector to emitter, there will be some voltage. If this is the direction of current flow, this will be VCE. To restrict the current flow, act as a valve, VCE gets smaller and smaller. The smaller it gets, the more current I allow. The smallest VCE can ever be, however, is zero. And typically, you can never quite get to zero. It's typically around 0.2 volts. Likewise, when I try to maximize the current flow, VCE goes to the smallest number it can, typically about 0.2 volts. Another way to see that is the power dissipated by the transistor. Power is volts times amps. If the voltage ever went negative, the power absorbed by the transistor would be negative. It would be producing energy. Can transistors just a piece of silicon? It can't produce energy. Power can never go negative. Voltage VCE can never go negative. You can't actually get to zero either. So likewise, you wind up with VCE saturation being clipped at something close to zero, typically about 0.2 volts. So we've got three models for transistor, off state, active state, and saturated state. And the conditions for the three, if I turn off the diode, there's no current flow based to emitter. No current flow means there's no current flow anywhere. Transistor's off. In the active state, I've got I sub B is greater than zero. That's true for both active and saturated. In the active state, however, I wind up with beta times I sub B is less than the maximum. The transistor is restricting the flow. That's like a valve in the intermediate position. The last case is where I open the valve fully. Beta sub I, I sub B is more than can flow, in which case the transistor saturates. VCE goes as, as small as possible, close to zero, about 0.2 volts. That's for an NPN transistor. A PNP transistor we'll look at occasionally. Most of the time we look at NPNs, however. A PNP transistor has a PN junction collector to emitter. Likewise, there's an arrow reminding you, here's the diode collector to emitter. That's the direction of current flow. If I produce current through that diode, the transistor turns on. Otherwise, it's turned off. Likewise, I've got the three states for transistor. 
and VCE and VCB is less than 0.7 volts. There's no current flow through the diode, the transistor turns off. If I have that much current and I get current flow, ICB is greater than zero, I could either be active or saturated. Active is when the current I'm com commanding, beta times ICB, is less than IC max. I get the active state. If I try to command too much current, the valve is fully open. Transistor saturates. With that, I've got three states for a transistor. Any circuit involving a transistor, I have to analyze one of three possibilities. One of the three will be correct. 